In this PLC Basics video, I'm going to talk to you about the start-stop seal circuit. Now the start-stop seal circuit is a very primitive piece of ladder logic code, but it's used all over the place in one form or another. It basically takes a momentary input and uses that to latch on an output. It then takes another input to turn off that very same output. Sounds pretty simple, right? It is. So let's get started. For this project, I used a leftover piece of laminate flooring to set up the demo. It's not something you see a lot in industrial controls, that wood grain look, but for our purposes it'll work okay. On the left side, you see two buttons, a green one and a black one. Those are going to be our inputs. The top one, the top green button, is going to be tied to X1 and serve as our start input. The bottom button, the black one, will be tied to X2 to serve as our stop input. And off to the right side, you see a green pilot light, which will serve as an output indication and will be tied to Y1. So I'm using Automation Direct's Click Programming Software with a Click PLC to demonstrate the start stop seal circuit. Uh, to begin with, the first thing I usually like to do is go to the address picker up here in the upper right hand corner and allocate the I.O. So for a start stop seal circuit we're going to need a start button and these are X's are inputs and so these will be wired to real world inputs so they'll be uh, I'll include an electrical diagram as well and this will show how these are hooked up. X2 is stop and then over on the on the Y we have the outputs. So for Y001 I'm just going to call it output. And we'll have that hooked up to a, a pilot light. So I'm going to hit OK there. And then we'll start our ladder programming. Now we've got some shortcuts we can use down here. I've gotten used to using the keyboard shortcuts F2, F3. But uh, when you're starting out, you probably just begin by dragging these over from the... I'm going to kind of highlight it here with this little circle around the pointer. And we'll allocate this as X1, which I know is my start input that I just allocated earlier. I'm using a normally open contact here. For the stop contact, we're going to drag over a normally closed contact, which is X2. And unlike some more advanced systems, the click uh, only allows you to enter the contacts using its designation, the X designations and Y designations. You can't use these um, names that you allocate, start and stop, or whatever you want to call it, at least as far as I know. If somebody knows that that's, there's a different way to do that, please let me know. And then for our output, we can drag this over, or you can also double click on it, um, Y1, which we know is our output. Now in order to make our seal circuit, I'm hovering over top of this, I'm holding down the control button, pressing the down arrow one time, and the left arrow one time to create this branch. And I'll put another contact here, and that will be my Y1 as well. Whoops, not T1. Just hitting the undo. That will be Y1. So it's the same as my output. So the way this works is when you press the start button, the way to look at this when it's branched like that is this is an OR statement. If you're going to think of this as conditional logic, when the start button is pushed or this output is on and this output is not on, activate this output. So when we, when we begin the ladder logic, the start button's open, we depress it. The stop button is also open, but the normally contact makes it act as though it's closed. So uh, the contact is allowed through to the output and Y001 turns on. This causes this to become true, latching itself on. So it's uh, the start causes the circuit to latch on or seal. The stop button then when that's depressed will open this connection and cause it to drop out. And so this is directly controlling uh, an on-off function where you get a momentary contact to control an output and latch it on 
just by that momentary button press. So I need to add a little something here before we can download this to the PLC. You just need an end instruction. So we're in the main program area here and then we always need to have an end instruction. We'll connect to our PLC. And I'm using an Ethernet version of the Click PLC. We'll connect up. Uh, typically you don't want to read the project from the PLC if you're just constructing a project for the first time. And now I will go to PLC and write project into the PLC. Showing me the size of the program. I'm also doing a runtime edit so I can download it in real time. That as opposed to being able to start and stop the program. Uh, this is mainly focused on the start stop seal circuit so I'm not going into depth too much on all the little idiosyncrasies of the click programming. Um, if you'd like to see that in a future video, let me know. So we can see the program's downloaded. It's in run mode, meaning the PLC is running. And it's indicating the, the parts of the program that are active that are being hit upon here. And so um, if I already press this start button here, which I will do, you can tell that a momentary contact has caused this to actually latch on. And so um, then we can also press the stop button. And that momentary contact of the stop has caused that to um, turn the output off or cause it to delatch, I guess you'd say. I don't know if that's a word, delatch. Um, <clears throat> and so as it is, it's just a basic, you might use this for something like a motor starter or something like that. It's um, you know, kind of, a, like I've said before, a primitive piece of ladder code. Um, but where it can get interesting is if we expand it and we use some other functions with it. So now what I'm going to do is tie in uh, maybe a timer. I'm going to have to move a little bit of this code around to include an internal contact that's not a real world contact. All of these uh, pieces of uh, code here are actually tied to real world I.O. So X's being real inputs, meaning they're wired to the physical world and Y being a real output that's wired to the physical world. Uh, so in this next step, I'm going to include a few things, uh, include an internal contact and a timer to show how maybe you'd use this to uh, turn on a motor uh, for a given amount of time or something like that. So I'll change this to, let's change this to C1. Oops, I typed in something incorrect there. And we're going to change this to C1. And I did the same mistake twice. That's, at least I'm consistent. So I haven't I haven't labeled this, but it's an internal contact. Uh, I could label it quick, just so it maybe is a little bit more clear. We'll just call him Latch. And I've actually I've got this off screen because I've got it scaled, so it's kind of hard for me to get to this OK button without popping up my. Uh, my toolbar down below. It's called C1 Latch. And we can see the name populates here. Now that doesn't do a heck of a lot right now because it would just latch this internal coil onto it. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to right click on this, insert a rung before cursor, just so I can pop my end instruction down one. I'm going to hit F2 to insert C1. And I'm going to tie that to that real world output we used before. I double clicked on that. Y1. So now this will latch on and turn on my output. And we're gonna we're gonna get to the timer in a bit, but you'll be able to see where I've essentially just offset this using an interposing internal relay. And we can we can download this into the PLC as well, just to make sure it, it works like we think it will. All right, so here we see the blue lights showing again. If you're not seeing this kind of thing and you're trying it on your own, you can go into Monitor, Status Monitor. And there, I, since I selected it, it turned off the Status Monitor. I'll go back, Status Monitor. It's also Control-Shift-S. Um, <clears throat> so I'll hit the Start button again. And there, a momentary press caused our internal contact C1 to latch on. They were always also using C1 here to continue through to turn on this output. I'll press the stop button again. And we can see that the stop button caused that to drop out. So let's expand this a little bit further. Now instead of this output, 
maybe I'll delete him out of there. Um, I want to use a timer. And this timer is T1, just because this is a new problem, new program, and I know T1 has not been designated yet. And we're going to turn him on for, let's say, 10 seconds. We change our units to seconds. I've got this set as an on delay timer because I want it to come on after a certain set point. And the current value would not be retained. This means if, uh, if the timer is off, it doesn't retain its current count up if it counts a few seconds and then turns off. And then I'm going to once again select uh, this to insert a rung. And here I'm going to put a normally open contact, T1. Now T1 is the output of our timer, so after 10 seconds, or whatever the set point is, this timer will become active and turn on. And then we can turn on, we'll select our favorite output, we can do this here, Y1. So the way this should work is you press the start button, turns on this latch, this latch holds the timer on, and after 10 seconds the timer will turn on the output. Yeah, actually what I want to do is I want to change this T1 to a C1 so that as soon as this is latched on, it turns on my output. And along with my start button, I want to put in a normally closed contact and call it T1. So just kind of by walking through that code there. <clears throat> so this will, uh, once that start button is pressed, because this is normally closed and this is normally closed, it's just going to allow the uh, contact to pass through to latch itself on, which will hold the timer on, and it will also turn on this output. Then when the timer times out, the set point will become active, causing the latch to drop out, and that latch will turn the timer off. So in essence, we've set up a piece of code, a piece of ladder logic, so that every time you press the start button, this will turn on for 10 seconds, turn on this output for 10 seconds. Now, because we left our stop button here, we could also press that stop button before the timer has elapsed and kill this prematurely as well and turn off the output. So let's download this and see how it works. There we can see we're live again. We're in run and the blue is showing up. I'll go ahead and press the start button momentarily. And there, we've got, we pass through on our latch circuit, and latch is on, and we can see here that our timer is counting down. And we timed out, and the light went off. We'll just do that again. Now this time, before it gets to 10, I'm going to hit the stop button. So right about 8 here, stop button. and that caused uh, this to drop out here, causing our output to turn off before it even hit the set point. Hopefully, the start-stop seal circuit was easy to understand. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop me a line or leave them in the comments. Like, subscribe, do all that great stuff, and thank you for watching.